If there's one game that I could recommend that's perfect after a hard day of work or making props, Vikings War of Clans. This game reminds me of the top strategy and RPG games of the 90s and the thousands, which I was totally crazy about. And now it's actually on mobile and the graphics are amazing. You can choose your own playstyle, which is really awesome. Now like me, you could just build an impregnable city and raise your economy. You could use your diplomacy skills to rule the world or gather your friends, build a massive army and destroy enemy castles. It's super fun. Guys, me and Vikings are giving away a new iPhone 10 and a super prize, a brand new MacBook Pro. Now, if you want to get the iPhone 10, just download Vikings through the links in the description of this video and upgrade your palace to level five. And if you want to win the MacBook, just get to the highest level and you have until the end of the month. It's super easy and fun. Now, to find out how to get your prize, you can do it via the Instagram link in the description. The giveaway is on the 30th of January of this year, so don't miss it. Support my channel, download Vikings from the links below. Hello, I'm Odin. Today, I'm gonna make a requested prop. It's Ray's staff from the Force Jedi. Uh, I mean, The Last Awakens, or the, 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 uh. I'm gonna start with a three quarter inch PVC pipe. PVC pipe is typically sold in 10 foot lengths, so I'll just cut it down to six feet. PVC pipe is flexible. Ray's staff is supposed to be metal. So I wrap blue tape around the wooden dowel to make it big enough to be a snug fit inside of the PVC pipe. And I wrap tape about every foot or so on the wooden dowel while I was putting it in. Once it's inserted all the way into the PVC pipe, it stiffens up to be just about right. For reference, I print out some pictures that I found online. And after I marked the center point on the staff, I noticed something. And that's 36, and that's nine, then it's quarter scale. <laughs> I just multiply everything by four. I measured and marked where every major part needed to go on the staff. So from here to here, no, from here to here, it's just fabric wrapped. That's easy. There are many sections that look like a big series of rings, but instead of just wrapping the staff with wire, I thought I could use some bilge and pump hose, which has corrugations in it that look almost exactly right. Now, because the hose is a bigger diameter than the PVC pipe, I'll once again add some tape to make it a snug fit. Now I thought I would just use some wood screws to hold the hose in place, drilling a pilot hole first. Now I didn't think the screw heads would be as ugly as they actually are. So later I tried something different to secure the hose. But one benefit is the wood screws will help hold the wooden dowel in place. For extra texture and details, I wanted to use some odd stuff as well. Not only did I have some things saved, but I bought lots of plumbing items for the shapes and textures. I like the barrel of this dollar store ray gun. It'll fit right over the pipe. First, I'll remove the authentic plaster sounds. I can then cut the barrel out on a bandsaw. I need to clear out all the insides so it'll actually fit over the PVC, and I can glue it all in place with PVC cement. This is the same stuff you'll use for like a sprinkler system in your yard. And wrap it all with blue tape so the glue can set up. Then I add another bit of pump hose, leaving some space of just PVC pipe between the raised details. Next on this end is the big finned part. Now this is the bit that looks like it's from a Tuscan Raiders Gatoriffy stick. I add some thin styrene to hold some inch and a quarter PVC pipe in place over the three quarter inch PVC pipe. By the way, all these sizes only reference to the interior diameter or the hole that's inside of the pipe. So the outside of a three quarter inch PVC pipe is actually a little bit bigger than one inch. And then I can cut the fins that I want from 16th inch styrene, sanding one corner so it's rounded. These are all glued on with PVC cement again. I'll file the corners of the thin styrene strips so the bigger PVC pipe can easily slip over and then glue it in place. Now there's a disc that goes on top of the fins and this I cut from a two inch piece of PVC pipe gluing styrene to cap the open end. While the glue sets, I can start on the cones that are also gonna go on this end. Now, I thought these cones looked a lot like the ends on Darth Maul's lightsaber, but I couldn't find one at a Goodwill, so I bought some $2 plastic shower heads instead. I only want this outer cone shape. So I take apart the shower heads, and then I widen the small end with a Dremel so it'll fit over the PVC pipe, and then glue some styrene to cap the big ends. I grind the extra plastic off that two inch PVC, and then open up a hole for the three quarter inch PVC pipe to fit through, and then glue on a cap to the other open end. Back on the cones, I remove the extra plastic from the wide ends, then I cut strips of thin styrene and glue them to the sides. 
With all the pieces assembled, I can glue the two inch PVC disc to the staff and then I can glue on the first cone. There are some smaller cone shapes next, and to make them, I did the same thing that I did on the Aquaman Trident and cut down the puzzle edges of some foam mats, and I can glue them around the PVC pipe. So I'll just glue some foam on to get around it a bit. Put the pipe over it, that'll be fine. Now these parts are actually from a lightsaber toy. I've got a few of them left over after the Beyond Geek build. I'm gonna go ahead and use them because this kind of looks like it's a lightsaber anyway. I have to cut the ends off so they can slip over the pipe. I want to add the switch from a lightsaber onto this part. So I cut and grind out a hole so it has a place to sit. I glue the foam in place and add styrene to fit the lightsaber parts. And then glue the switch in place. Now it's not actually gonna do anything, but it looks good. And then I can glue the second piece of foam on. What's funny is now that I made this little tiny piece here and I look at it, what if I couldn't just cut the rubber foot off the bottom of a crutch or a walker and put that on here instead? Yeah, that's so we can raise staff out of a walker. Yeah, that works. There is not enough PVC pipe left for the last big cone. So I cut a slot in the side of a piece of half inch PVC pipe. That way I can force it inside to the three quarter inch PVC pipe. This will let me extend the three quarter inch pipe and glue on the cone. What I'm gonna do for the very end of the staff is use this piece off of a PVC slide coupler. First, I'm gonna grind out some of the inside to fit the end of the staff and then glue it in place. To cap the end, I will use a quarter inch carriage bolt. I wrap tape around the threads to make sure it's a snug fit inside of the pipe. And then once I place it inside, I can load it up with hot glue to actually hold it in place. With an actual metal tip on the end of the staff, I don't have to worry about it getting hurt from any concrete floors. Now I need to start on the other end and I grind out the inside of a three quarter inch PVC coupling. This is the type that you'd use to glue two pieces of pipe together. But with removing the ridge that goes inside, I can slide the whole piece down one pipe and then just glue it in place. Now I want to use the rest of that repair coupler as well. It doesn't go through, so I just need to cut, cut that off, cut that off, grind all the words off, do that. I realized I had found a better way to hold the pump tube in place on this side of the staff. I'll just grind out my other PVC coupler and cut it into small rings. Then I can glue a single ring on, add some tape onto the PVC pipe, slide the pump tube over it, and then glue another ring to the other end. No ugly screws. So I'm liking the idea of making a little ring and gluing it on in order to make this piece here captive so it can't come off. I kind of wish I would thought about that before I drove a bunch of screws into it, but eh, <laughs> this end will look good. Now, they only had the two shower heads left at my Home Depot. So for this last cone, I'm gonna use this weird orange clear piece. I found this loose at a thrift store. I have no idea what it was for originally. But the plastic is brittle, and this is the only part that would break easily if the staff is dropped. But it is the right size and shape. Now, I was really worried about this thing shattering when I tried to cut it in the bandsaw, but it worked out just fine. And now, just like the others, I can glue styrene plastic on the big end and then strips of styrene up the side. I make a hole for the staff and glue on the cone. For this end, I'll use a little more of that same PVC coupling that I'd used for the smaller rings. Then I'll insert another cut down piece of half inch PVC pipe and one more carriage bolt with tape and some hot glue. There's one important detail that I need to add in the foam ring. First, I take a grinding stone to my Dremel and then make a couple of recessed spots and then I can super glue a Phillips head screw into one of them. Okay, so what I wanna do now is paint the entire thing a black color as a start to actually start painting it. But I can't just use any spray paint because the ribbed tubing here is probably made out of a bit of a vinyl and that will never dry with standard spray paints. Not even acrylic spray paints, I, I don't understand why. But what I can use is a vinyl and fabric spray. This is an automotive spray paint. This stuff is made so you can spray paint your vinyl seats and the steering wheel and dashboard of the inside of your car. And then it's tough enough that it won't rub off when you get in and out and sit on it all the time. But because of that, it is incredibly toxic. Don't spray paint this inside. Wear a mask. This is one of the nastiest spray paints that I know of, but it works really well. And when it sets up, it's fine. So what I ended up doing was lightly dusting the whole thing with not just silver spray paint, but an antique bronze as well. That ended up with a pretty good color on it. What I wanna do 
is go ahead and weather it a little bit. I'm gonna take some acrylic craft paints, mix up kind of a rust color, and then sponge it on. So it's a really splotchy kind of pattern. I am careful to not just cover the whole thing, but allow some of the metallic colors to show through the rust. Then I lighten the rust paint and sponge on a second coat of lighter rust color. But this color I use much less of. It's more of a highlight than just a full even coat. Then I sealed it with a matte clear spray paint. So basically, that's the staff. I need to wrap this middle section with cloth and make the sling. I picked up four different cloth belts from thrift stores to do this. First, I use a seam ripper to remove all the buckles and open up the ends. And I check the darkest color to make sure it can wrap all the way down where I want and I won't need to cut it and make some kind of adjustment. No, it's gonna be just fine. Oh, that's good. Okay. I cover the staff and the belt with contact cement and let it mostly dry. Then I can wrap the PVC with this belt. There are two additional wraps of lighter fabric. And I just used wood glue for these, since I'm gluing fabric to fabric, and I want it to look a little more random. Some blue tape will hold them in place until the glue dries. And I do the same thing again for the other wrap. I had saved the one extra large belt so I can make the sling. And I have some clips from an old duffel bag. And I was happy to see that the adjustment buckle for the duffel bag will fit into the leather end of the belt. Remove the original buckle for the belt itself and slip one clip onto what is now a sling. Run the open end through the adjustment buckle and then sew on the other duffel bag clip. And I just quickly stitched this on by hand. You can always use a sewing machine if you want to. There are leather straps that snap onto the staff that hold the sling in place. And I found this leather purse at a thrift store. It has a really good weathered look to it. To make the straps, I will need four leather strips and a D-ring. I make sure my middle straps will be the right size, then I can use a leather punch to make a hole I can fit a quick rivet through, layer all the pieces together, and hammer the rivet shut. Then I slip the D-ring in between those two straps, and then rivet on the fourth piece of leather. And I can add snaps to the end of the leather in the same way. You got a base, the connector that goes over the base, you got the decorative top, and the little ring that goes over the top. Once they're mashed together, that makes a snap. But I'm not gonna use silver ones, I'm gonna use black ones. I can make holes and I can attach the bottom half of the snap. Then wrap the strap around the staff and press against the leather to mark where the top snap is gonna need to go. And the top snap goes on in exactly the same way, but you wanna put the top snap into a special holder so it doesn't flatten out and look bad. Cut the ends of the leather round to finish off the straps and then clip on the sling. All the parts that I used to make this prop, I picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. Every time I make a Star Wars prop, you guys always ask, make a lightsaber. Well, I have. It's just over on the Beyond Geek channel. It's right there. Go show them some love. Scratch belt. Combat ready. And I've made Rey Skywalker's staff. Yeah, right, if we don't know her last name yet officially, Fine, that's true, I could be wrong, but first trilogy, someone starts out on the desert planet, gets picked up by someone else, given a lightsaber, last name Skywalker. Second trilogy, someone's on the desert planet, gets picked up by someone else, given a lightsaber, last name Skywalker. Third trilogy, someone's on the desert planet, gets picked up by somebody else, given a lightsaber, the same lightsaber. Is it not gonna be Skywalker? Okay, it may not be, but I'll probably be disappointed. But even if I'm disappointed, I'll still be Odin Makes. I have a Patreon page and I wanna say thank you to everyone who helps me make this show. And each month I have a drawing to win one of the props that was made right here in the show. If you like this video or have any ideas for something for me to make, please leave it in the comments below. And if you make any of these projects yourself, you can send me a picture. I didn't forget the most important detail, the Phillips head screw. So important they put it on the movie poster.